this wonderful morning you are welcoming me to our services and God will bless you as we go together. We are going to start with the word or our hymn that will come from uh, hymn number 19 as we proceed on. Hymn number 19. God the glory. Thank you. 
for every remembrance and be with us. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom comes, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Keep us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Praise God. Uh, we are going to prepare our hearts as we get to hear the word of God from our parish minister, that is Reverend uh, Gidenji Boru. Uh, may we stand and uh, sing him number two. So that we Brethren, 
be encouraged that the Lord is with us. Shall we pray? We want to thank you because of the power that is found in your word this morning. And Lord, we pray that the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth will be acceptable before you because this is a humble prayer of faith and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Today, I want us to share about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And as we continue to think about this resurrection, I want us to think and to share from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 21. And I want to read a few verses as we move on. John chapter 21, verses uh, 1 going down, this is what it says. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cain Gali, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I am going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, We will go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. I want you to underline the word, they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, of, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you find some. When they did, they were unable to hold the net in because of the large number of fish, the word of the Lord. Of course, we know that this is the, gospel, the, the fourth gospel that was written by the apostle uh, John, and we also know that the apostle John is writing to the Jews who are living in the Hellenistic world. They have been um, influenced by the Greek uh, culture, and that is why they will be referred to as being Hellenistic. But John is also writing to prove to those who are there, therefore in the Hellenistic world that Christ is still the true Messiah, the one who was expected to come. And what we are reading before us is Christ appearing for the third time after, after his death, the third appearance or the third appearance after resurrection. Now the disciples are at the Sea of Tiberias, and we see Simon Peter, who was like their leader, saying he's going back. Think of him that he has been with Christ. He even betrayed Christ. But at this point in time, he decides now enough is enough. I'm not going to stay here hiding anymore. I'm going to go back to my own business. I'm going to go back to what I used to do. I'm going to go back so that I can continue earning. Perhaps because before Christ called him, he was a fisherman. And maybe this was the business of the day. And so he thought, why don't I go back to my uh, original business? And you can see when he declares that, the rest of the disciples, the ones that you have just read here, they decided, okay, if you are going back, we are also going to go back. And even before I move on, I want to ask ourselves, a time comes in our lives and we face challenges. Do we think sometimes, do we get challenged of going back to where we came from? Do we get challenged of thinking that where we used to be, where we used to be in that worldliness, that it is better than where we could be, uh, where Christ has called us? And so we think of going back. I want to assure you that even Peter, thought of the same. But then, as we continue to see, uh, we continue to see is that Peter, he, he goes together with the disciples and then in verse 3, we see that they spent a whole night, a cold night, trying to fish. A very cold night perhaps, or uh, maybe it was not even cold, I don't exactly know how the weather was, but they spent the night and they caught nothing. Sometimes I think of us as Christians, when we move out of the will of God, when we decide to do things on our own, and then we go out, let me remind myself, as I remind you, that when we walk away from the presence of God, we are also assured 
that out there we will not get anything because life is in the hands of God. Remember from the day one, the book of Genesis chapter one, it is God who said, let there be, and then there was. Unless the Lord himself gives you, unless the Lord himself provides, provides to you, unless the Lord himself declares that he is the one who is going to become the, the provider, his divine, through his divine providence, if you try by your own efforts, you will not get anything. You will not get anything. And whatever you may get may not even be helpful. So there is the question of the nothingness when there is the absence of God. And brothers and sisters, I want to encourage ourselves to remain focused in Christ, to remain focused in God, to remain focused even in the dark moments. Because when we get out of His presence, we are also assured that we will just waste our time. So that was a whole night. It was a dark moment. Having worked hard and catching nothing. It was a night wasted. I also see sometimes when I look at this COVID-19 as a night. Church, we're in a night. And we need to focus our attention onto Christ. Because when you continue reading the scriptures, the fourth verse is saying, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize him. He is standing, and the disciples are not realizing him. We also find ourselves in a situation where Christ is so near us, and yet we don't seem to realize him. We could even be very busy seeing, very busy praying, and he is standing there with us, and yet, we don't seem to realize that he's with us. But then, he comes, and he finds these guys very desperate. He is asking them a question. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? So they answer, no. Then he gives them the direction on what to do in verse 6. He tells them, throw your nets. Because the Lord knows what we need. The Lord knows where we will get it. The Lord knows today, even the way the evening will be. He even knows, by the way, when this COVID will go. He even knows what else will happen after COVID. He knows all these things. But He expects us to look unto Him, to know Him, and to listen to Him. He told them, throw your nets on the right side. Throw your nets. What is the Lord saying to you this morning? There may be that nothingness. There may be that lack. But what is the Lord saying to you? What is the Lord saying to me? The church. We could be going through our own night. Churches are closed. People are not going to worship normally. But what is the Lord saying? Is He telling us that the internet could be the next where we need to catch and give people the message that the Lord has called us to do. The Lord again knows the right time, the right place, the right harvest, and we need to trust in His voice. We read there below and we see that they got a large catch. Because the Lord Himself knew where they would get it. As the Lord of life, He knew where they would get it. And it is only then in verse 7, that after they got a miracle, they said, it is the Lord. Let us not wait for the miracle to happen, for us to realize and to say that it is the Lord. Let us be careful to obey even when we don't see the miracle. And towards the end, they will find that in verse 10, that they asked to bring some fish that they had just caught. Christ will use what we have. God, we always use what you and I have. And this morning, my friend, my brother, my sister, whatever that you have, it doesn't matter how little it is, that is what the Lord will use. He used the stick that, the, that Moses had. At one time, he used five pieces of loaf and two fish. Here we see him. Uh, 
asking them for the fish that they had caught. It doesn't really matter what you have. That is what the Lord will use. And he used this and prepared a breakfast for them. It is good to know that the Lord will always prepare us for, for a breakfast, for lunch, for supper, and beyond all these things, He will prepare us for His miracles. And as I go, I want to encourage us this morning that the Lord will never leave you unattended. Even in this COVID-19, the Lord is with us. As you listen to this message, I want to encourage you, as I encourage myself, that the Lord is with us. Indeed, He has said in His word, He will never leave us, nor forsake us. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. Have a good day. Let us pray. We thank you, eternal God, for your time that you have spoken to us. We pray that as we continue to think and remember about your resurrection, that you continue to minister to us and continue to bless us. We thank you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's meet on Wednesday. We have a midweek service on Wednesday, so let me meet on that day. God bless you. Have a good day. Uh, thank you so much, uh, our minister, for ministering unto our hearts that with Jesus we are not empty. Praise God. With Jesus, everything is okay. We are sure that when we walk with Christ, everything will work out well for us. So, uh, we're going.